Anime Elitist, critical reviews for critical viewers. Hey guys, me here, and today I'll be reviewing Drifters. Now, if you've been watching anime for a while, you'll instantly recognize this art style. It looks the same as Helsing Ultimate, and that's due to the fact that both the mangas are made by the same dude, but the anime was adapted by different studios. I'd really say they perfected the Helsing art style with this one. I'm just going to say it now that both of these shows are very similar in style and character. The setting and story are completely different, but the way the story is told, as well as the way the characters are portrayed, is about the same. If you liked Helsing and thought it was badass and awesome, you'll probably feel the same about this one. If you didn't like Helsing and thought it was dumb and edgy, then you probably won't like this one either. Both of the shows go for the badass vibe, but the difference between badass and edge fest is a thin line, and sometimes that line gets crossed. If that's a big pet peeve of yours, this show is not for you. Now I'm just going to say a little bit about the premise. Drifters takes place in a parallel world of some sort where different historic figures or heroes are teleported in to fight on two different sides of a good versus evil conflict. This show is great for history buffs and there are a lot of inside jokes where knowing about the people really helps. I'll put some of their names in the description so feel free to read up on each one for a few minutes before watching. It'll help. Since this show takes place in Japan, they tend to have a bias towards having more of their like own local heroes, and a lot of them you probably won't have heard of. Also, just to give you a heads up, some historical figures who you like might be fighting for the bad guys, and some historical bad guys might be fighting for the good side. So if you tend to get overly attached to different historical people, or have a lot of idols, this one might not be great for you. The setting is a medieval fantasy with magic and goblin armies and that stuff, but most of the fighting is done hand to hand with medieval style weapons. And it's by no means realistic. Before we go any further, I'd like to give you the overview. It has 12 episodes and promises another season, but no information on that is out yet. It is both subbed and dubbed, and some of the themes it has are like military strategy and what makes a good leader and leadership overall. And some of the tags I'd give it are historical, badass, action, parallel universe. This show is aimed at a late teen demographic, and whether you think it ends up being edgy or badass is probably up to your personal tastes. I believe it managed to do a good job of not crossing the line too much. The tone, however, is inconsistent. It has a lot of gag moments, and they often break with the flow and the badass tone. And personally, I find them pretty annoying. At least all the battles are serious, though. But a lot of other things such as diplomatic moments and character interactions are just goofy and ridiculous. Also, because this is a bloody badass show doesn't mean it's a mature show. If you're looking for depth or a water type plot, this isn't the place. It has some interesting themes and ideas, but it doesn't go too deeply in with them. It does also have some interesting military strategic ideas, and they are fairly spot on, but remember that this is still a fantasy show and so isn't going for historical realism. The fights are just completely over the top. One more thing to note is that since the characters are from different times, some of the things they say and some of the views they hold aren't very modern or progressive-y, but that does add a little bit of realism overall. I'd give the narrative format about an 8. It manages to get a lot done in 12 episodes, but the story is by no means complete yet. The grip is about a 7. And for the B&B &B rating, I give it two bullet holes for heavy blood and some gore. No nudity. Cussing is present. On the cliché side, Drifter does have a lot of the standard anime tropes and clichés present. Overpowered main slash named characters, ridiculous gags, not particularly smart but idealistic protagonist, etc. Like, it's just the full thing. I'd give this one a 7 over 10 overall. Enjoyable if you go into it with the right expectations. I recommend it to fans of Helsing and other over-the-top action shows. Overall a high average and fairly original. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. I hope you liked the show. Please leave a like and a comment down below and subscribe for more. See you next time. I'm out.